girls, I, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to say. I tried to write about this a little bit, probably not very successfully. The Detroit Lions are one game away from the Super Bowl. Let, let, let me say, let me say that again. The Detroit <laughs> Lions are one game away from the Super Bowl. What is happening? What's what, can you explain any of this? That's that's kind of our job, I thought. Um, so I hope I can, but. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this coming. We, they've been building toward it, you know, 8-2 uh, and two last season at the end. Uh, big wins in prime time, uh, coming through when it mattered. A really good run game, a uh, fantastic rookie tight. I mean, Aiden and Hutch, it's just, they, they, have the, they have the components. We've been seeing this coming and obviously very, very good at Ford Field with the, with the backing of the really loud crowd. I think you and I turned to each other one time when it was, I think, C.J. Gardner-Johnson when he, caught the, when he got right, the interception. Early in the game, yeah. That, was, that one moment was the loudest I've ever heard Ford Field, and I think they were overall louder last week against the Rams, but sustained, yeah, sustained, and it was. But this is, I mean, it's is it a, it's not a surprise, is it? No, no, and, and the, the difference is last week it was loud late. It was just as loud late today as it was last week against the Rams, especially when Gibbs broke free on that 30, 31 yard, thirty one yard touchdown that put him up two touchdowns if I'm not mistaken, or did that put him up one? I can't remember. It was all kind of a blur. In any case. Yeah, the, the crowd was nervous here today. Let's be real. There was a lot of anxiety because it was a, it was 10-10 and a half. Detroit couldn't really run the ball at all. And they couldn't really throw it um, and sustain anything, right? And now that change in the second half, especially the late late in the third quarter and through the fourth, they picked it up. But it was this is what playoffs are about, right? We just we don't have a lot of experience around around here with this, do we? That's the second week in a row. Last week was a one-point win against the Rams. Today was a one score. I know you needed a two-point, but still. This is kind of what this is all about, right? This yeah. is how these games go. Absolutely. You get you got to make a play late, and they did. Yeah, the, the you know they're the, we don't have experience with this, and I think that you know the, the everything gets tighter in the playoffs, and these teams are here for a reason. And the Buccaneers played a really good game mm -hmm. um, coming in here, hostile environment. Pa Baker Mayfield played a pretty good game. Did. Um, Mike Evans played a fantastic game. Um, you know, and just things, you know, they did their kicker, by the way, uh, uh, Chase McLaughlin was really good, by the way. He'd only missed, I think, one field goal all year, maybe. I'm sorry, from 50 yards or more. It was seven of eight or something. And then he clanked one from 50 yards off the upright. So it was like, OK, it, maybe it's the Lions game again or Lions day again. Um, but they're they, they need to find they're finding ways to win. They're getting contributions from, uh, you know, Derek Barnes seals the game with that interception and Craig Reynolds runs it in at the goal line on fourth, and you one. know, fourth and one. And it, yeah, I mean, just, you know, it's really they're getting a lot of um, production from places that you need it in these kind of games, because if you only rely on your stars, that's going to be hard unless you have a cast full of stars so this is what is um encouraging about what the lions are doing and that should give them hope going into the nfc title game in san francisco well i think i mean it's funny my my uh uh one of my sons was on the phone a little bit they by the way carlos my my two boys came down to destroy this one with some other friends they just want to be downtown in a bar to watch and then after the game they walked over and kind of meet and mingle with all the people coming out of the stadium and people were chanting and into the streets for a while so that's the because it was it's not quite historic. Next week would be historic because they've never been to a Super Bowl. But, but again, yeah, people want to want to be around this because it, it's hardly happened, right. and because it is new. But but what I think we're quickly realizing, or not we, but everybody's quickly realizing around here is that yeah, you, it, it comes down to a couple of plays. I mean, in some ways, Tampa outplayed them. They certainly outplayed them in the first half. They outgained them for the game. But they had two turnovers, right? And they, they hit the crossbar, like you said. They hit the crossbar on the field goal. Um, you know, what, what, what are we talking about otherwise? We're talking about a very different kind of story, if not for those turnovers probably. But, but you know what it reminds me of a little bit? I'm curious what you think because you're a big Patriot guy. The Patriots, I'm not saying Jared, please, folks. I'm not saying Jared Goff is Tom Brady. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the Patriots won a lot of games in the playoffs like the Lions won today. Right. Where – it was debatable who played better. You know, you look at the stats or even sometimes, you know, maybe the other team had the advantage, but, the, but New England was making the play in the end. Mm -hmm. And it was, you never knew where it was coming from. Yeah. They won a lot that way. Yeah. And that's how, to me, the Lions won the day and to a degree against the Rams, only they just do it in a lot more joyful way. There's more fun here than there maybe was in New England. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if you if you look at Bill Belichick, right, he's the, the poster child for the grumpy coach or whatever. Um, it is it is more enjoyable, I think, for the fans to be able to rally behind a team like this, a coach like this, who the team kind of embodies who he is and they're looser and they're mm-hmm. they're, uh, you know, a joy to cover. Most the, of the, speech, weeks. the special teams are out there dancing when they line up. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, they're it's fun. Uh, yeah. I mean, Kirby Joseph and all those guys and Chase Lucas and that. Yeah, it's it's. And you can see the the crowd was feeding feeding off of it when they show them on the jumbotron. You know the crowd gets into it, it too. Does, and, absolutely. And uh, you know that's you know you can win with you know the grouch. You know you can, Oscar the grouch as your coach, or you can he showed it. You know yeah. yeah, you can win with a uh, Dan Campbell. And so it was. Uh, Dan Campbell was kind of subdued today, though. He was. What was, did you make of that? He was a little bit. I think. I think he probably wasn't in the locker room. I haven't seen those videos yet. You know, oh, of course we, he was. We're, we're not privy. Uh, we, we By the time we get in there, the, the talks are over and that sort of thing. My guess is he wasn't. But you're right. For us, it, he, he sounded a little emotional a, a yeah. couple of times, almost like he was going to kind of start crying, just thinking about the moment. But he was, you're right, he was a little subdued. I just, I, I think he's overwhelmed in a good way. I also think, I'm curious what you think, of course, as always, you're Carlos Menares <laughs> and uh, the brains of this operation. Uh, I, I think that they they believe that they can go beat anybody. And if you're too rah-rah or if you're too, I mean, they're, they're, they, I guarantee you they think they can go out and beat San Francisco. Of course, yeah. And so I think that might be a little bit of it, too. Like why he would be subdued? Yeah, just not wanting to be so too over the top about what they just did. Like there's still, there's still more out there. Yeah. No, I don't know. That's just a guess. Yeah, I. Uh, it was weird to, to, you know, I mean, I think someone mentioned it was the anniversary of him being hired today, three year anniversary. Um, of his press conference, yeah. Yeah, he. Uh, it was. Um, I I think that I I think he understood the magnitude of this game and that. It's been a really long time since they've been in the NFC title game. Um, it hasn't happened very often. They've never won two playoff games at home because of the way that the structure used to be in the 50s when they were winning their titles. Um, I, I think a lot of people have been throwing this kind of stuff at him. And I, you're right. Maybe the, he doesn't want to think like, hey, look at what we've done. Look at what we you know, like, hey, we know there's. And he said it early in the week. We have three more to go. They know they need to win two more games to win the whole thing. So maybe he doesn't want to get too caught up in what this means. And now we're going to the NFC. You know, he's going to have plenty of time to talk about that he during will. the week. And what did you say the last week, right, Carl? He said that's one. That's one. Yeah, and, and I guarantee. And I get, and, and he didn't say that today. <laughs> Wait, but two I, comes after one, right? Right. right. Okay. I think so. But it, but I guarantee you that too. you could you know when Jared Goff came to talk to us after. <laughs> After Dan Campbell, sorry for making you, know, you want me to hold the mic. Oh, no, 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 no that's very, very, you rest, you rest. Very, very kind. I'm of here for you. Sean. Very, very kind <laughs> of you. But, but it, you could hear. I, I, I swear to God, you could hear in Goss' voice. He was talking about going to San Francisco. Somebody asked him about going home. He grew up in uh-huh. he grew up in Marin County in the Bay Area, which is just north of the city. And uh, th- he was like, "Yeah, it's going to be great to go home." And he's like, "Yeah, they have a great team, but just about us." And and the way he answered that. <laughs> yeah, they, they're not. They are not scared of San Francisco one bit, are they? I will, they think they can go out and hang with them, whether they can or not. I don't know. He mentioned but, they were a very good team, and and um, I will guarantee you this me this game means a lot to Jared Goff. Mm-hmm. He talks about San Francisco kind of a lot. Um, with his teammates and such, and uh, he's proud of it. He went to Cal, there in the Bay Area. So it's this is a this is a lot. I think he, I'm guessing he's going to want to downplay it this week when we talk to him on Wednesday, and that oh, it's a really good team, but this is about more. Just like he said, it's not just about me. I thought that was a swaggy swag comment. To be honest with you, I didn't think he was downplaying it. Really? Yeah, I, the way I heard that was, uh, yeah, they're good, they're good, but. We'll be okay. And only he didn't say that, but I just felt like that was his tone. It was it was weird. He doesn't not weird, but it was it was interesting. He doesn't normally hmm. do that a lot. It wasn't braggadocio out outwardly so as much as just a confident group, right? They should be. I mean, and especially you saw what Green Bay did. They almost beat them. They did. The seventh seed almost beat the number one seed in their first game. For so. sure. And by the way, Tampa, I mean, how much better is San Francisco's defense than what they saw here today? Not much. They're be- a little better on the edge. Yeah. Uh, right. They're not as good in the interior on the defensive line. I'm talking about their linebackers are just as good. They may have the best linebackers, but there, there's not a lot of difference at, at, at that point. Um, 
in terms of the so if they can they can figure this out and find a way then that that just gives them confidence to go against san francisco right yeah the one thing is san francisco has a very strong home presence there there they you know it's that's a tough place to play it has been so that team's been rolling um they've got a lot of you know excellent players on both sides of the ball uh, you know, it's it's hard to pick against San Francisco. There, no team is unbeatable, obviously. But um, it, I think they have to. They 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 don't want to diss San Francisco. I think, but they definitely need to. You know, um, give them their respect, but be confident, and they should be confident. I think they they deserve to be confident. No, they should. And and look, and you and I are later this week when we reconvene, like we always do. I look forward to that. By the way. Uh, well, we're going to talk more about San Francisco, and, but but uh, first of all, uh, we need to take a quick break. Our producer is yelling at us. Uh, for all I know, he's screaming at us. But I want you to know, I was thinking about it in the back of my mind. We need to take a break. So, like minds, right? Can we Absolutely. can we at least say that? Yeah. We'll take a quick break. We're going to come back, and I want I want you to I want to hear your thoughts just on this night and the importance of it, and the, and and maybe a little of the meaning of it because this is this is different. This is very different. It, it, it is. And it, it's been a long, long time coming. And you mentioned Dan Campbell getting hired three years ago to the door, having his press conference three years ago. I want to say to the day, mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, you remember that, what that was like, the fact that we're standing here yeah. and they're one of the way from the Super Bowl. So that I, I want to get your thoughts on all that. But let's take a quick break, pay some bills, and we'll be right back with Free Press Sports with Carlson and Sean. Welcome back to Free Press Sports with Carlson and Sean. So, Carlos. Where, where do you, and not that I want to rank. You don't need a top ten or anything like that. But where, where do you put this? You've been covering sports here a long time. You've lived here for twenty years at least, so you have a pretty good understanding of this area. Um, at least I'm going to say that publicly. But uh, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but seriously, where, where, where do you put this? What do you what, what do you make of what happened tonight and what and what it means to this area and these fans? Yeah, you know, I wasn't here for the Wings winning uh, their first Stanley Cup in '97, but. Um, I, you know, I have talked to a lot of players and coaches and whatever over the years, and I definitely get a, a, a have gotten a good understand, a fair understanding, I think, about historical context in the last 20, 30 years. I, you know, I don't know if anything will resonate with people as much as the Red Wings winning that um, first Stanley Cup in whatever it was, 50 years. Um, and, and part of that was because I think that the rivalry that they had with the Colorado Avalanche, it was almost mythological the way that that, you know, played out. And we won't see that maybe ever again in our lifetimes. And, you know, it's a different sport. Um, certainly the Tigers, when they were on their runs and they went to the two World Series and Magdalena Ordonez home run, right, to get to the World Series off the Yankees, I think it was, right? And uh, all those, there are some been fantastic moments. This today was um uh, for the lions i think it was a um something i don't know if i i would ever see is them getting to the nfc title game mm -hmm. um it, it just doesn't seem real in some way still and that they had the two playoff games and that, that if you've heard and i've been you know we've been we've been covering this team for a long time and they've had their runs and they've had made you know the sue years and the calvin years and all that stuff the stadium has been loud before but i think people understand mm -hmm. that this is built on more than that, that there's that there's a lot more sustainability to it because of Dan Campbell, because of Brad Holmes, because of Sheila Fordham, um, maybe because of Jared Goff, you know, all that. It just seems like it's not it's not a, a flash in the pan kind of thing that, that there's something behind it. There's there's the thoughtfulness, there's intention, there's, you know, a lot of stuff that goes into this. But watching these fans come in being around it i mean anybody can feel it in the in the area of how much people are behind this team how long they've been waiting and i'll tell you one thing listener viewer out there is i covered 0 and 16 to the bitter end and a lot of people and i'm not going to point fingers but a lot of people tapped out uh when it was going bad when they were 0 and 8 0 and 9 0 and 10 i don't think i was uh, writing columns at that point yeah but uh, uh I, I begged you to come down for sidebars but you but, refused but, so but, no, okay. but, but i was here but the fans were still coming the fans were not they were this place was half empty and they deserved to be why would they be here the press box was a ghost town so a lot of people and, and that's that was a unique year but there were so a lot of lean years and it was hard you know and i think right now finally as you've always said you know, this is you'll see when this team wins what kind of a football city this is people have been waiting for this for so long and now we're seeing that we're seeing it 
it's really nice that the fans get to celebrate this mm -hmm. and really enjoy the ride. Hopefully, a lot of them get out to San Francisco. But it, well, where do you think it ranks? Do you think it, anything compares to this? You just covered Michigan's championship. Yeah, I mean, and for Michigan alums, a lot of whom are spread out around the country, that may be a bigger deal to them to tend to this. But, I, but here's how I think of it. But they won the title 26 years ago. I mean, it's not No, yeah, they did. I, I guess I just think about it a little bit differently with college and pros, and we don't need to get too far down this rabbit hole. But, you know, college college starts at 18. I mean, now some, for some folks – you can be a fan of the school. You don't go to the school, and it's passed down through generations, and that's fine. And I totally understand that. There, there are fans out there, both Michigan, Michigan State, Alabama, Texas, whatever, wherever you go, Ohio State in particular. But, uh, but really, fandom starts with a team like this when you get put in a onesie, you know, and yeah. and, and, and and you don't choose it. It's um, it's kind of like you don't choose where you live as a kid. It's it, but it becomes part of you. Now you feel about home. I mean, and that's true everywhere. That doesn't necessarily make Detroit unique, but and this is a football city, like a lot of cities are football cities, because this is a football country. But so it's not unique in that way. But I think, um, and the Wings did maybe a little of this, but they didn't tap into the what what what's happening right now is different from '97. I was around for part of, part of that summer. Um, that was specific to hockey, and at the end of the end of the fan base and. Well, hey, look, this isn't a political thing to say at all, but hockey doesn't have the same broad section of the demographics that football does. Football is, there's a reason it's the most popular sport, uh, in, you know, in, in the country. And I don't know that it's particularly close, especially when it comes to watching. There's something that's communal, whatever the flaws of the game, whatever else you think about the game, there's something that's communal about this sport. And you, and that's what we felt. We felt it last week. We felt it this week. Real quickly, Carlos, my brother, um, and his wife and my nephew came to the game. It was a surprise. She bought tickets for him for his birthday. He called me on the way down and said, uh, told me where he was going to sit. And I said, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i come see you before the kickoff. And I walked down there and I see him. And as soon as he sees me, he starts to cry. He gets tears in his eyes. And I knew exactly why. It, it, it's not, I mean, he just doesn't do that normally when he sees me, right? But it was because I was here, seeing him here in this place with what's at stake and everything they've been through and what this town means to this team and how the team sees itself. That, to me, is what is happening. This is about identity in a way that the Pistons, the Tigers, and the Wings can't quite capture. Not for the for the whole of southeastern Michigan, not like this team does, right? I, I, it's a, it, You can feel it. You can feel it. The, all the... All the people out there, we talked about this last week, all these people crying. I mean, there was some of that again today. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think that, I mean, yeah, football is definitely the, the dominant sport in our country, and that's that's why it resonates, you know, so well, and especially in the Midwest. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I do think I do think of Detroit as a hockey town. It's, it uses that nickname, obviously, and it's in this area. But you're right, it is not the NFL for sure. No, Detroit's um, actually more of a basketball town if we're just talking about Detroit. But which we don't. You mean Detroit proper, the city of Detroit. The city of Detroit. Right. Like, you know, there are a lot of people who come in from not. From no, but, there's, but the city of Detroit, Detroit is actually a great basketball town. Right. That's, a, that's a different podcast. Right, so. right. It, I mean, this is, yeah, we, we won't get into the ranking of whatever. No, no, uh, no. The wings are definitely number two, but we won't get into the rankings of whatever. But, but. I'd say the, the lines. Uh, no, you're wrong. But anyway, the, yeah, this is, this is something that I think because people, and if you're old enough, you know, even if you didn't live in the 50s when you were old enough to watch them, you know, maybe your father did or your grandfather and you remember them talking about the great Bobby Lane and the great team of the 50s and all that stuff. Um, even when I moved here in the 90s, um, people were still talking a little bit about the, you know, the yeah. 50s and the curse of Bobby Lane. They were still at oh, the Silver sure. Dome, you know, all this stuff. And I mean, it was more about the Barry era just finishing. Mm -hmm. Um, but Billy Sims wasn't far, you know, the, like the little things that you could see, you know, that the the the, the touch harken back to the not super distant future uh, past. Now that's gotten what are we at sixty five years, sixty six years from the last time that they won. So it's been so long, and I think that's that was kind of to me resembles the wings because it was such a stretch between championships with that team. And now it's such a stretch. This is the longest stretch now by far, right? For the Lions to win a championship. So right, no, for people sure, have been but, waiting and waiting. And the, and the other thing too, Carl says again, the NFL. And you're right; it's the national sport. It's most cities' dominant sport. It's also sort of a front door to a community in the way that Michigan football is that University, Ohio State is University. 
there are a lot of folks that see, look, the, the Wings, that was a great, great run. But the rest of the country isn't paying attention in the same way they are to if the Lions make a run of the Super Bowl. And nowhere close, actually. So that's the other thing. One of the things I heard after last week's game uh, was how great the network made the city look, how nice downtown looked on the overview shots, mm-hmm. right? Mike Tirico, who's a, who, who's a local, uh, works for, calls the games for NBC, right? You guys know Mike Tirico. Talked about what it meant at the end of the game, but just all those things kind of fell in place. But that's not that's not nothing. People thinking uh, residents around here and people who live in southeastern Michigan, the way the, 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 that it matters to them how we look. The rest of it. you can say we shouldn't care, but we, of course we care. Yeah, and and that's a little bit of this too, to be honest. I and I think that's one thing. Like um, you know, growing up in LA, and I was a I was an LA Kings fan. So I was always jealous of when the when the Red Wings were. In fact, I went to grad school with somebody who was a big Colorado Avalanche fan, and he'd get he was so pumped for those you know Avs Wings mm-hmm. games. And as a hockey fan, I I was jealous. I wanted. I was like, what is it like at the Joe? I love. As one of the things I wanted, to, first things I wanted to do when I moved here, and and I think people look at the Lions this way too, and the city, and they think, wow. Uh, this is this is cultural this is something that is deeply embedded in this community mm-hmm. and you know you 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 know the rams were appreciated of that because they play in you grew up in la and they were just playing at you know anaheim stadium right even with the, even with eric dickerson it just wasn't the same vibe even when the raiders were the coliseum it wasn't the same thing sofi is definitely not like that at all and not every team even though it's a national or it's our national sport not every city is a football city a lot of them are not football cities. Even Tampa, I don't think, can touch what Detroit has. Or no, has no, or but, but, but Tampa, the, the Buccaneers are by far the most popular. I mean, the, the Rays don't draw there at all. The Lightning have been good. But no, the Buccaneers are the most popular team. But you're right, it's not, it's not, it's the, not same. the same. Because there are a lot of transplants, right? Yeah. And, the, and, the, and that's part of it. And LA is, yeah. LA, yep. Dan Campbell talked about LA after the game. Yeah. As, he insulted hey, my people, but he, yeah. he wasn't being critical of it at all. He's saying it's just different. There's all basically he was saying there's a lot more to do out there, and that's just a fact. And that there, there, but, there but, just is. But they're just different. Like the way that I think Midwestern cities and cold weather states are generally football cities. Uh, southern and western states are baseball cities a lot of times. Well, and so so the, LA is a baseball town. The South loves football too, but it just they like college football. Right. right. Yeah. For so long, they just had one pro team down there, and that was Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And they they were kind of the team for you know four or five state region. But in any case, all right. We, we, enough of the. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's fun to talk like this. But you wanted to say zeitgeist, but okay. No, I, I don't. I don't really. That was a good band in Austin in the early '80s that I used to go to at clubs. <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I my last point is, and I don't want to make this too too personal, but but my brother and watching his reaction. That that wasn't that's not a one off. That wasn't an outlier. The way he reacted down there and the way they felt and and I, the crowd was the stands were pretty full at that point. I just stood there and so the way he 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 that that's representative of tens of tens of thousands oh, of people, sure. maybe more to be honest. Sure. And um, that's the thing. It wasn't just a you know specific circumstances that led to this emotional thing. It was representative of something that's that's pretty deep. And pretty broad right now, and uh, and they got a coach that's tapped into it. He keeps talking about sacrifice and playing for the person next to you. That's not new, right? 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 But he means it absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing about football. I think we love just whatever else you think about the game. It really is about the person next to you. If you don't do yours, your job, they can't do theirs, and the whole thing is a house of cards, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. There's it's all about teamwork. It's the most probably teamwork sport there is um in our country anyway yeah. yeah and they've they've uh they've made good on what dan campbell has preached and they bought into it and you know these are the these are the rewards from all that work and all that preaching and, and staying staying true to it absolutely all right Lou, we need, you need to get right i want to read uh, i always look forward to reading what you write and uh and i guess i need to write <laughs> no i need to i need to get we right need to too. book our flights to san francisco that's what we need yeah to we need to we need to we need to take care of travel plans and do all sorts of stuff we will obviously gather uh we'll get together later in a week talk more about i still can't believe it an nfc championship game but uh until then any last thoughts um, no, I hope the I hope I do hope the uh, the fans get to go out to 
to Levi, historic Levi Stadium. <laughs> it's not, I used to go to Candlestick for uh, Dodgers. That was Giants actually games. one of the great crowds. In, it was uh, a great it, crowd, yeah. although as a, if I went as a Dodger fan wearing Dodger gear, I the Giants fans didn't even watch the game. They just were booing no. me and my friends who were wearing Dodger gear. So. It's funny, you're, real quick, you're talking about, we'll talk about this more, but you're talking about LA. San Francisco is actually a great football town. It Part is. of it is because they've been really, really good, but they had a kind of an iconic park with stuff to play in with the wind coming. But uh, yeah, they, they love that team there. And just like the Oakland is all, you know, love the Raiders, unfortunately. That's another story. All right. Who do we need to, we don't need to thank anybody, right? No, no, no. The fans for watching yeah, this. Yeah, thank, thank, and thanks for staying with us. Enjoy this ride. We'll talk to you in a few more days uh, when we return with Free Press Sports with Carlson Sean.